Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Angel Bobs. Since the last episode I've been working on my module construction so the first thing I did was I moved it all from over on this side of the bus over to the other side because there wasn't enough room over here really so I stripped most of this out although I've left it building up some of the things that are required for the module research these um, green and, and grey boards that are being passed over to a train station over here so everything's been moved over here I've now got three stations in here that are bringing in three different types of crystals that we talked about in the last episode those are the ones that are being made from from fish water here and as you can see this is kind of backed up I should go and have a look at that then the ones that are being made from the small, uh, medium biters here and the ones being made from the large biters over here. So we've got the three different sizes of crystals. I think they're called shards, splinters and crystals or something like that. So they're coming into these three stations here and being fed across. I've got one, one train basically handling all of this. So it'll shuttle off to do, do one set of crystals, then do the next, then do the next. And there's so much space in these titanium chests. That I'm, not, I'm not, at the moment at least, I'm not worried about storage space in those. There's going to be lots and lots of room in them. Then over here we're doing, um, we're turning, we're built again building up the uh, the boards for the module construction. We've got the um, the first level of, of specific module boards being built here, second level here from the second type of crystals, and the third level over here from the third type of crystals. That's all quite straightforward. We're then feeding them in up to the all the assembly machines here that are doing the actual module construction, and so each each one gets slightly more complicated. The first one um, brings in some basic components, builds the actual module. The second one also requires transistors. The third one requires um, the next step up of the of the module boards, and I think also requires um, chips as well, uh, integrated circuits, whatever it is it calls them, and so on up the, up the chain. I forget I forget exactly where the where the lines are on all of these. Oh, here we go. Here we look. If we, if we look at this one. We can see here that this one takes in the transistors, this one takes in print, uh, circuit boards, this one on the other hand takes in, um, at this point we need, we need to start using gemstones for it. And gemstones were another fairly major thing. So down here I've got one massive station that brings in all six different types of gemstones. They're brought in from all the way down here because in order to make the gemstones you need this crystal dust or at least you need the slurry that comes from it and I didn't want to set up another system building that somewhere else so that's being pulled through here and it also uses the crystal catalyst as well but they come from basically the same product and they're then fed into these machines We um, with, from, from the uh, slurry we can crystallise out the, the six different types of crystals we can then, I think we then chop them into appropriate sizes, give them a polish, give them an extra polish uh, using the various different um, processes along here. So we've got the um, the grinding wheels coming in here for this stage. We've got some sort of polish and polishing discs up at the top here to get you, to get you the final stage. And at that point they then wind their way through these belts here and go into the train. Now making these was slightly complicated. Um, these were already being made for the crystals from the biological stuff up here. So I decided that rather than building an extra place, for, an extra system for building these up, since it's f building these grinding discs is relatively complicated, you need to go through this whole silicon process, silicon nitrides, uh, silicon carbide, and then make and then steel to make the grinding discs. It was actually a lot easier just to pull off this one. Um, that did cause a few problems where these systems didn't have enough coming through. But I've come in here and I've I've increased the amount of production going on here by about at least twice as much maybe three times as much I'm not sure um, and that has been in, has been sufficient to keep at least keep the crystal the, the biological crystal production up and then we've got this steady trickle of the uh, of the grinding discs coming through up here and as we can see we've got 28,000 of them now so that's that's plenty that's going to keep me going for quite a long time <clears throat> I might actually put something in on here that stops the production when it gets above 20,000 or something we'll, we'll we'll see but it's not as if the resources are in particularly short supply so those being brought down here, that's easy enough. Then the, um, ah yes, the polishing compound that was being made over here because that required alumina, which is one of the which is one of the um, one of the steps. It's, it's the one that comes out of this step of, in the from these blast furnaces and making aluminium. Um, so I, I, I made it because aluminium is still under very very high demand. I've essentially made a copy of this and put it over here, and that's now producing the uh, the polishing compound in massive quantities as you can see by the fact this belt is completely backed up and we've got how many thousand here we've got only only 96,000 it's obviously quite 
big the stacks aren't or the stacks are the stacks don't hold an enormous number of that product so we've got like yeah 96,000 but that's plenty I'll keep keeping it all going for a while it also required um, base mineral oil that was slightly tricky it was base mineral oil was something I was producing as a precursor to lubricant down here somewhere yeah one of is this one this one here we go this 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 one is base mineral oil which I was then turning into lubricant so it wasn't actually going anywhere so what I've had to do is tap that one off and squeeze yet another station in along here now in hindsight I probably should have added it onto this column over here but um well I didn't think of that at the time so I, I just squeezed it in down here but that's going okay there's uh, 70 odd thousand in there um, that's enough to keep well I it's, it, there is there is enough enough of it around anyway so I don't I'm not too worried about that so that was that one that's that's making the that that was making the um, uh, polishing compound and then I've got some assembly machines here that are making the polishing discs so uh, out, out of wood and steel which I brought in separately because that, those aren't being used anywhere else so I thought I might as well and it wasn't it wasn't too difficult to squeeze these extra stations in here um, ideally I'd have it would have been useful to have a bit more space maybe I should have done the crystal handling somewhere else um, I'd have needed acid and crystals and another set of these filtering systems and it didn't it didn't seem worth the effort at the time put it that way but, but anyway this is working well enough um, this is clearly the slowest step of the process because we've got the yellow icons on all of these machines and then green ones on these so these these are running quite happily and they're producing a, a gentle trickle of these uh, these gemstones and then there's an enormous train that shuttles backwards and forwards between there. Is that it leaving? No, it's not. And up here to drop the um, to drop the jewels off. Because the reason I've done it like this with the um, six different uh, wagons, rather than have it, rather than dumping them all into one and then sorting them when they arrive, is because that means if one of these gets backed up, and one of them probably will, if you look up here, the purple isn't actually being used for anything here. Whereas all the whereas the other five are all getting used for the more advanced modules, that would mean that eventually, and probably in a very very long time, given how big titanium chests are, but eventually, the purple gemstones would back up and fill up the entire system, and there wouldn't be room for anything else to get through. So, it's generally best to keep everything separate. I've done the same over here. Each of these is a separate wagon for the train, and again that means because I don't expect to use as many of the green modules. Those are because they are um, they reduce power consumption and to be honest that's not so valuable I've got so many um, I've got so many solar panels out there that I'm producing well 12,000 solar panels I'm producing far more power than I need so power isn't an issue however using the um, efficiency modules and those uh, are very very valuable at least where the game will let me and using the speed modules where I can't use efficiency modules are also very useful if this isn't running I should go and find out why not this step appears to not be working for some reason. Let's have a quick look at that because these should all be running quite happily. It's not getting any solder or any ICs. I've, that's because I've not put in the um, <laughs> the inserters. There we go. Uh, that should solve that problem. Right. So, as I said, there's th the three different types of modules. We've got the um, productivity modules and those actually cause any machine that's using them to produce a greater quantity of the output um, based on uh, for a certain amount of input. Let's have a brief cut while I go and find a machine with uh, productivity modules in it shall we. Okay here's a good example. These um, ore sorting facilities I put the um, productivity modules in. Let's find one that's actually working. Here we go. So as you can see there's two progress bars on here. The green one represents the machine working in the normal way, taking in the products, processing them and then spitting out the outputs. The yellow bar represents the additional gains from the productivity modules and that means I'm getting extra, each time this bar completes it also produces an extra set of these um, products. And that that bar will grow as the other one is. So if I look at a machine that isn't, ru isn't running then you'll see that the, the yellow bar is stopped. So it's not just producing them out of thin air, but it means for each time the um, the system runs, it's producing an extra. It's producing additional outputs, so you can use that to, to reduce the amount of actual resources you need. It does also slow the machine down, but it produces enough extra resources to be worth it. 
the speed mod and that, that also is the case over here we've got um actually that one isn't running because it's there's too much productivity going on here we go so as you can see the um exactly the same thing is happening over here we've got the green bar growing to, and then when the yellow bar finishes it also produces the output not everything works with uh, productivity modules though and in vanilla the the rule is that anything that produces an intermediate product something like so a component like a cog or a circuit board or a iron or copper or something like that can have productivity modules but things that produce a final product such as um, I don't know maybe a, a satellite or a car or a construction machine or an inserter that sort of thing those don't aren't allowed to use um, productivity modules they can however take speed modules which do exactly what you'd expect they simply make the machine run faster um, and I'm trapped in these pipes I don't know if we've got any machines around here that have speed modules in them but they they do simply they simply make the machine run faster, and so you produce more output for the in the same amount of time, but you use proportionally more of the input as well. Both of those cause the machines to use more power, but that's generally okay. We don't care. As I said, I don't care about power. Uh, don't care about power consumption anyway. <clears throat> so that's modules in um, in Angel Bob's. Or Bob's specifically, I think. Uh, there are seven, seven tiers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are eight tiers of modules. Producing up to here, we go all the way up to module module eight. And the um, mod module eight. Uh, let's see if I can, it'll tell me about it. Um, so it's a 35. Module seven is a 35% productivity increase. So I'm imagining module eight is probably going to be a 40% productivity increase. But as you can see, there's a massive energy consumption increase as well. What it also supports is the sort of combination modules um, and things like the raw speed module or the raw raw productivity module so if we look at this one this is just a productivity improvement of 40% so it's really really um, really effective it doesn't cause the extra power consumption however it does require a lot of different modules to go into it so it's very very expensive to make and I haven't even researched it yet so I haven't started looking into those yet um, as I said, I don't really care particularly about the increased power consumption, so I've just just left that alone. So with this, um, these gains in productivity, with all these modules that I've now unlocked, I've started applying them in certain places where the where the machines are struggling. So down here, these fish farms, they've all been loaded up with um, with speed modules. Now there's still some problems down here, and I think that's related to the um, getting rid of the art polluted artificial fish water. Um, if I can find it. No, why isn't that running? No fish water. Okay, I'm not producing enough fish water. That's something I can go in and fix. Um, but in general, I'm producing a decent quantity of fish now that are being fed over to be turned into meat for the other processing production facilities. I, th I think things are generally going well enough now that I don't, I'm not too worried about my uh, production over here. Yes, I'll go over and tidy it up from time to time and make sure things are working nicely. For example, here I put in things that are supposed to take out any excess um, biters. So as these machines produce more than they're actually consuming it should then spit out the excess over here to be turned into like those ones to be turned into um, additional meat for the uh, for the grinders there's the same thing over here for the uh, for the lot big biters although as you can see by how much space there is along here we don't have rem remotely enough large biters yet to, for this to be an issue but eventually hopefully the um the breeding pro uh, program will get to the point where i do have more of them Actually, that said, I'm not convinced it will. There don't seem to be any more being bred here, so I think we're actually just eventually going to run out of these, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but, yeah, oh well. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to have a, have a look at that at some point. That's reliant on the puffer eggs, I think. There's a particular type of puffer. So I'm, I'm, I think whilst the, um, the medium biters were a net positive, so if you just keep running these machines and these ones, you will eventually gain yeah as you can see we've got more of the queens than we that we actually need and so they're spitting out the uh, the eggs at a decent rate the eggs are being turned into normal uh, medium biters and so all of these machines can run as fast as well as fast as they as fast as the meat production will let them anyway <laughs> that's still a problem even with all those uh, fish farms we had oh yes one of the problems I had with the fish farms was I was producing too much of the um, polluted fish water as you can see this tank has got almost 300,000 in it and that's after I and I only put that in a short time ago but for some reason fish water doesn't seem to count as a liquid and I'm not able to get rid of it with these um, 
with these uh, clarifiers. So instead, it's all just getting dumped into these tanks down here, which is a real pain. Um, I don't know why you can't dump it, but it just it just looks like I'm going every so often I'm going to have to go in here, delete all of these tanks, and replace them again. And that's a bit rubbish, to be honest. Okay, does that cover everything I've done? It nearly does. There's a couple of other things, but I think I'll leave those for the next episode because this one's getting on a little bit. So, yes, built up new um, facilities here for, with all the um, to build up all of the um, all the all the different modules, all the way up to to eight, which is the uh, the, the best ones you can get. That involved bringing in the um, in the gemstones, uh, which can also I believe can also be used for more advanced weapon types. We'll look at that in a bit. Um, there's some rocket fuel in there for some reason. I don't know what that's doing there. I'll have to go and investigate. And I've started pushing modules out to try and increase production elsewhere. So, I think that's, uh, as I said, that's that's the episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time when I'm going to start talking about a bit more space I've created in various different ways. I hope you'll enjoy, join me for that and you're enjoying the series. I'll see you next time.